If you were to put every red wire on an R terminal and every white wire on a W terminal on a control board, you can blow fuses, burn out very expensive smart thermostats, and let the smoke out of transformers and control boards. So in order to avoid these costly mistakes, it's very important that you learn and understand what's happening on both ends of the, each wire you're hooking up. So it's not just what terminal does a wire go to on the thermostat, you also have to know what terminal the other end of that wire goes to on the control board. And so that's what today's video is about. I'm going to teach you guys the relationship between terminals on a thermostat, terminals on a control board, when a thermostat sends 24 volts on that terminal, what happens when the 24 volts gets to the other end of it. Now it doesn't matter what kind of control board you have or what kind of thermostat you have. They all work under the same principle. So there is a direct relationship on the wiring between these two devices. So if you have a wire hooked up to the R terminal on your control board, that same exact wire has to go to the R terminal on your thermostat. You're always going to have this R to R, W to W, Y to Y, G to G, C to C. As an example. This takes priority. This direct relationship takes priority over the color scheme that a lot of guys try to depend on. All right, so we will try to stick with this scheme whenever possible, but this takes priority. The R terminal on your control board is going to send 24 volts from the R terminal there to the R terminal on your thermostat. So in most cases, you're almost always gonna have a red wire available for that purpose. So we'll connect R from there and send 24 volts to the R terminal on the thermostat. Now the thermostat receives that 24 volts and when it calls for cooling, it's gonna take that 24 volts, it's going to transfer it over to the Y terminal and the wire connected to your Y terminal is going to run that 24 volts back to the Y terminal on your control board and that will activate the cooling system. Now, here's where a lot of guys end up setting themselves up from failure when they try to depend way too much on colored wires and where they go. If you have a straight cooling system, what you're gonna end up with is only three wires sometimes. And on a three wire, all you have is red, white, and green. So because we have a red wire available, we're gonna stick with this color code by using the red wire to hook up to, to R to R. But you'll notice there's no yellow wire here. We're gonna use the green wire to stick with our color code, and we're gonna hook up the green wires from G on our control board to G up to our thermostat. We're sticking with color code there. But on a cooling system, we don't have a yellow wire. We still need to activate cooling somehow. And because there is no heating involved, we have to use this white wire here to activate our cooling system. So when you have just three wires like this, you're going to see that white wire hooked up to the Y terminal on your thermostat, and it's gonna connect to the Y terminal down on your control board. But that is still your cooling wire. It is not a heating wire just because it's white. Now, sometimes you might actually have a situation where you have four wires available, and you'll have a green, white, red, and blue. Again, we do not have a yellow wire. Now, a lot of times when you'll find a four wire like this, your system will be both heating and cooling. So in that case, because we have heating, we're again going to try to stick with the color code convention. So we will use the red wire for our 24 volts. We will use the green wire for fan. We will use the white wire for heating because we do have heating and we want to stick with that convention, but we still don't have a yellow wire. So the only wire left is a blue one. What you're going to see is that blue wire getting hooked up from Y on your thermostat to Y on your control board. Even though it is blue, it is not a common. The terminals will tell you what the purpose of that wire is, not the color of the wire. This, more often than not, is going to set you up for failure. You can let the smoke out of a lot of components if this is all you know about wiring. This, on the other hand, you will never fail. It doesn't matter what color the wires is. As long as you see this relationship, you're good. Of course, we want to try to stick to this convention whenever we can. But when we're missing wires and we have to improvise, this is priority. So the second thing you need to learn are the functions of the actual terminals themselves. So the R terminal on your control board is going to send 24 volts out on that terminal. The R terminal on your thermostat is going to receive that same 24 volts. <clears throat> our Y terminals on both our control board and our thermostat is for cooling. Our W terminals on both are for heating. 
The G terminal on both is for our blower motor, our fan, and the C terminals on both is our common wire connection. The third thing that you want to learn to really get a solid understanding of all this is not just the terminal functions, but you also want to understand how a thermostat actually works itself. There's a little bit of a difference there. So going back to our list of what each one of the functions are for each terminal on your thermostat, now we want to figure out what your thermostat is doing whenever it calls for heating or cooling mode. So I have here a thermostat control board. We have our power coming from our R terminal up to the R terminal on our thermostat. Now when a thermostat calls for air conditioning, for example, it is going to look for power on this R terminal and it's gonna send power to the Y terminal on your thermostat. But at the same time, it's also gonna send power onto your G terminal. So you have two terminals that are gonna get powered up in cooling mode and that Y wire is going to go back to your control board and activate cooling mode and the green wire is going to go back to your control board which turns on the blower motor. In heating mode the same thing happens. It's going to take the power off your R terminal and send it to the W terminal and it's also going to simultaneously send it to the G terminal. So whether it's in heating or cooling mode you're going to have two terminals that are going to get powered up. Now it's pretty easy to understand that Y activates cooling, W activates heating and that G turns on your blower motor. But there's a little bit more to to this G terminal than you would initially think. On modern control boards, when they receive a signal 24 volts on the Y or W terminal, the control board itself is capable of turning on the blower motor with those modes. So you don't actually need a wire between the G terminals on the thermostat and the control board for your heating and cooling system to work properly. Now there is an exception to this. Um, you may have an old control board like this one I have here. And this control board only has three terminals on it. It has a W, a G, and an R. There is no Y terminal, there is no common terminal. But this control board is still capable of turning on an air conditioning system. So how does that work? Basically, when your thermostat sends 24 volts on a Y terminal in a system like this, that 24 volts will travel down that Y wire with the rest of the thermostat wires to the control board, but it doesn't get wired directly to the control board. What it does is it gets wired directly to another wire that runs out to the condensing unit, which pulls in the contactor. That 24 volts will return back to the indoor unit, and instead of landing on a common terminal on your control board, it actually gets grounded to the chassis of the unit itself, right down to the metal. So how does the, the circuit know when to turn on the blower motor? Because it has no idea the outdoor unit is running since it's not wired through this. And that is when the G terminal becomes essential for your air conditioning system to work in a situation like this. Now the main purpose of this G terminal these days is that when you look at a thermostat like this one here, you're going to see an option that says fan and it's going to say auto and on. Sometimes it may say continuous. The purpose of this feature is that when your air conditioning system satisfies, if you set your temperature to 70 degrees on your thermostat, the house reaches 70 degrees and your cooling system shuts down. In between cooling modes, your house is going to slowly start heating up again. But not every room is going to heat up at the same exact rate. You might have one room that's really gets a whole lot of sun and that room heats up much faster than another room on the other side of the house that's shaded. So the purpose for this fan is when you turn it to the on position, it only powers the G terminal on the thermostat and that will send 24 volts only to the G terminal on the control board. So what ends up happening is your blower turns on, but your heating and cooling do not. You can pull the air from each one of these rooms, blend it all together into one uniform temperature and redistribute it throughout the house so that you don't end up with these temperature differences from one room to the next. That's all it does. The next topic I'm gonna to cover is how a thermostat works when you actually have two different R terminals. Now, sometimes you're gonna see a thermostat with an RC and an RH with a jumper wire in between the two. The RC is your 24 volts for cooling and your RH is 24 volts for heating. Now, what does that mean? What this is, is a feature on your thermostat that just allows you to have two completely independent systems from one another, but use the same thermostat to control them. So for example, you have an air conditioning system with an air handler in your attic, 
and a condensing unit outside and that is just your cooling system and your heating system is like a steam boiler or hydronic boiler in your basement you can run both of those systems off of this same thermostat now the reason why you need two different R terminals is because each one of these systems has 24 volts that it sends out for power up to the thermostat so like we said before you have a let's say an air handler control board this is your ac control board you have the r terminal that sends power up to your thermostat now you have a boiler down in your basement let's say it's a steam boiler and it has a transformer on it that sends 24 volts up a red wire also to the thermostat all right now you don't want these two circuits to interfere with one another you got to keep them separate so if you have a setup like this you want to take that jumper out to keep these separate circuits a thermostat knows how to keep these circuits apart so when a thermostat that has two different r terminals calls for cooling a thermostat is only going to look for 24 volts from that rc terminal which is for cooling it is then going to take that 24 volts and send it to the y terminal when this same thermostat calls for heat, it is only going to look for voltage at that RH terminal and send that voltage to the W terminal to turn on heating. So your thermostat is not going to draw power from the same R terminals in heating and cooling mode. Now, if you do have a situation where you have a thermostat with two different R terminals on it, but your only your heating and cooling is the same system, like say, for example, you have a furnace with an evaporator coil sitting on top of it. Um, the 24 volt power source for both heating and cooling mode is coming from the same control board. You're only going to have one power wire coming up to the thermostat. In that case, you want that jumper wire in there for the same reason I just explained. If you have one red wire and you only hook it up to RC, for example, when your thermostat calls for heat, it's going to look for power on RH and it's not going to find it. So your thermostat's never going to be able to send 24 volts to the W terminal to turn on the heating system. It's only going to be able to run in cooling mode. If you hook that wire up to RH and you don't have a jumper in there, the opposite's going to happen. Your thermostat is only going to run in heating mode. And when it goes to air conditioning mode, it's not going to see power on that RC terminal and it's never going to be able to activate the Y terminal. So that's why the jumper stays in there on that kind of a system. The fourth thing you want to get down to really nail this stuff is that you have to understand how a condensing unit is wired into a control board in an air handler. This relationship of color of wire to the R terminal, white to W, yellow to Y, this does not work with condensing unit wiring. If you are using this to figure out how to connect wires from a condensing unit to a control board, you're doing it wrong. You need to throw this away. All right, so here we have a thermostat, here we have a control board, and we have the outdoor unit right here. Now, in our first item in the list, we said there's a direct relationship between the terminals, so R to R, W to W, Y to Y, and so forth. Um, when your thermostat calls for cooling, it's going to take power off that R terminal to the Y terminal. It's going to send the 24 volts down to the Y terminal on the control board. Now, as I said before, the control board knows well enough when it receives a 24 volt signal on this Y that it's going to turn on your blower motor. But your blower motor is only half of your air conditioning system. The outdoor unit also needs a 24 volt signal to know when to turn on. And so what we do is we run three wire to this outdoor unit. And I'm not talking about heat pumps, that's a different animal. But in a straight cooling system, we run three wire to the outdoor unit. And everybody uses both red and white wires for this purpose. They're gonna take one of the wires off of this three wire. They're gonna connect it to the same exact Y terminal that the wire from your T-stat is connected to. So you're actually gonna have two wires hooked up to that terminal. One goes up to your thermostat, the other is going to go to your outdoor unit to a contactor. So when your thermostat calls for cooling and sends 24 volts down that Y terminal, it's going to turn on your blower motor. It's going to jump over to this other wire, go to the outdoor unit, pull in the contactor, and then turn on the condensing unit outside. Now that circuit needs to be completed. It can't just end on that, that contactor. It has to come back into a common. So the white wire from that thermostat wire is going to be run back and it's going to connect to the common on the control board. 
So here's a circumstance where you have a red and a white wire not going to R and W. It's going to go to Y or C. Now it doesn't matter which way you connect it. You could put red on Y, red on C, white on C, white on Y. It doesn't matter as long as you have a circuit that goes around and around. It's going to work.